Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about compressor displacement and compressor efficiency. So when we talk about compressor displacement, we're talking about volume, and more specifically, we're talking about volume of a cylinder or cylinders. So just as a review, when you're finding the volume of a cylinder, you use this formula, pi times the radius squared times height. Radius is half of the diameter, but when you're talking about compressors, you're going to see different terminology than diameter and height. You're probably going to see bore used instead of diameter and stroke used instead of the word height, but they mean the same thing. This volume gives the volume of one cylinder in one revolution of that compressor. So in order to find our total displacement, which is usually expressed as cubic feet per minute, we need to know how many cylinders and we need to know how many revolutions per minute operating at. So if you want the formula for the total displacement of that compressor, you're gonna take the volume of one cylinder, multiply by the number of cylinders of that compressor, and then multiply that by the revolutions per minute. Given your dimensions are gonna be in inches, this is gonna give you the displacement in cubic inches per minute, which we will then change to cubic feet per minute. Let's take a look at an example. Calculate the displacement of a four cylinder compressor having a two inch bore and a two and a half inch stroke operating at 250 revolutions per minute. So the diameter is two inches, which means the radius is one inch, and the height or the stroke is two and a half inches. We have number of cylinders equal to four and RPM is 250. Given these dimensions, we can plug into our formula. Pi times the radius squared, the radius is one. The height is two and a half inches. The number of cylinders is four and the RPM is 250. When we multiply all of this together, we get 7,854. Now the unit is going to be cubic inches per minute because this gives us the total cubic inches per revolution. And then when we multiply by revolutions per minute, we will get the total cubic inches per minute. Now, typically compressor displacement is expressed as cubic feet per minute. So we need to change cubic inches to cubic feet. We know that there are 12 inches in a foot. So if we cube each of these, we will get 12 cubed cubic inches equals one cubic foot. So in other words, there are 1,728 cubic inches in a cubic foot. So in order to convert cubic inches to cubic feet, I'm gonna divide by 1,728. When I do that conversion, I get 4.55 cubic feet per minute as my compressor displacement. Now this is the theoretical displacement and compressors do not work at 100% efficiency. So I wanna talk about efficiency next and how we can use that efficiency to find the actual volume or the actual displacement. So in order to find compressor efficiency, it's typically expressed as a percent and percent problems are, um, can be thought of as percent over 100 will equal an amount over a base. And when we're talking about compressor efficiency, the amount is the actual volume out of the base, which is the theoretical volume. So we're going to use this equation to find the percent, the actual, and the theoretical volume. So we'll do three different examples with this. First example we're going to do is if the previous compressor had an efficiency of 70%, what is the actual volume of vapor pumped? We knew that the theoretical displacement was 4.55 cubic feet per minute, but let's find out if it's operating at 70% efficiency, what the actual displacement will be. So we're going to set it up using this as our guideline. 70 is the percent, it goes over 100. The actual volume is what we're trying to find. The theoretical volume was 4.55 cubic feet. And then we can cross multiply to solve this equation. So 100 times X will equal 70 times 4.55. In order to solve for X, we divide by 100. When I take 70, multiply by 4.55, divide by 100, I get 3.18 cubic feet per minute. Shortcut for that is you could have simply taken 4.55 and multiplied by 70%. 70% as a decimal is 0.7. So that would have also 
giving you the same result. So the shortcut is fine if you understand it. I'm using this because we're going to do um, questions where we find each of those things and it's a different shortcut for each of those things. So that's why I'm going to stick just with one method. In our next example, we have a compressor needing to handle 10 cubic feet per minute and it, it, we know that it's 75% efficient. The question is, what should its theoretical volume be in order to have an actual volume of 10 cubic feet per minute? So again, we're going to use this to form our equation. We know the percent at 75, that goes over 100. The actual volume, we want it to be 10, and we're finding theoretical volume. So again, we're going to cross multiply. 75 times x will equal 100 times 10. And then we're going to divide both sides by 75 to isolate x, and we get 13.3. So the compressor needs to have a theoretical displacement of 13.3 cubic feet per minute to actually put out a displacement of 10 cubic feet per minute if it's 75% efficient. In our last example, we know a compressor has a theoretical displacement of 7.5 cubic feet per minute and an actual displacement of 6 cubic feet per minute. We want to calculate what the compressor efficiency is. So in this case, we don't know the percent. That's our unknown. That'll be our x over 100 will equal the actual displacement or volume of 6 divided by the theoretical volume or displacement of 7.5. So what we're doing is finding what percent 6 is of 7.5. So we can cross multiply 7.5 times x, cross that diagonal, will equal 100 times 6. To isolate or solve for x, we're going to divide by 7.5 and we get 80%. There is a shortcut that you could use for this question as well to find what percent 6 is of 7.5. You simply divide 6 by 7.5 and then multiply by 100. But because I was doing three different types of questions, finding these three different values, I like to stick with one method or one equation and it works for all three types of problems. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the compression ratios of compressors. See you then.